Hello, in this video I'm going to look at the geometric series sum. So when we look at a geometric series sum, we always have that there is a common ratio between the successive terms. So in either case, when we're told that we have a geometric series, we'll always uh, assume that the common ratio is already understood as just R. So one thing about geometric series and their sum is that we can actually find them by way of a formula. So we can get that formula by essentially just treating this as, say for example we have S and we have that this is going to be 1 plus R plus R squared plus, okay, and this is going to be R to the N minus 1. Now if we multiply both sides by minus r, we have that this is going to be minus r minus r squared, and then minus r cubed, and then, well, in actuality, we're going to have minus r to the n. So we add both of the two sides together, and we get s minus rs equals to, but check this out, notice that you have cancellation. You have cancellation of every single term that's in the interior, including this last term. So that means that on the right hand side you're going to have 1 minus r to the n. But then notice that you can factor out the s, which that tells you that that's times 1 minus r equals to 1 minus r to the n and then this is going to be divided by 1 minus r so s equals to 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r now suppose that for example we just looked at what is the geometric series sum in terms of you know the common ratio and the summation symbols for example. So here we already found the finite series sum basically, right? So we have that we could probably just change this for example to where um, we can say 1 plus r plus r squared all the way down to our term rn minus 1. And basically we could just rewrite that using the series summation symbol. So what does that look like? Well we have the series summation symbol where k equals to 1 and in actuality this is going to be to n. So that's going to be the common ratio r but it's going to be raised to the k minus 1. So here we have that this is going to be equal to 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r. Now in any case, we have just derived a formula for the geometric series sum. If, for example, you have that this is preceded by, say for example, a initial term like a, then in either case you could always just, you know, multiply a on both sides and just say that a is the initial term, but in either case you would get the exact same thing. So let's say that for example we have a geometric series sum and that geometric series sum would have a common ratio of a half for example. So suppose that we have that this is going to be k equals <clears throat> well it'll be k equals 1, but here we're going to say that that's going to be to the fifth power, and um, not fifth power, but the upper index is uh, 5, sorry, yeah. So we have 1 half, and this is going to be raised to the k. Now, notice that in actuality we have that this is not technically the index that we need, but that's easily fixed by just taking out a half or just by saying that you have the first term is a half, the second term is a half squared, and then the third term is a half cubed. And then from there you know that basically the last term 
what is the last term? It's basically one half, but to the fifth power. When you do this, you can rewrite it as one half multiplied by one plus one half, and then from there you can kind of tell that the last term is going to be to the fourth power, and then just close the parentheses. So what this means is that basically you have a half multiplied by the series sum from k equals one. Now here's where it gets a little confusing. So the upper index it's going to be basically 5. So we have that it's 5, but remember that it's the common ratio raised to the k minus 1. So that's why it's raised to the fourth power, because 5 minus 1 is 4. Now different people actually define it um, differently, you know, where you'll start at <clears throat> maybe like 0, k equals 0, and in this case you would just bump the upper index down. So in that case, that's why it stops at 4 for this one. Uh, but really, it's all just bookkeeping. So we have that basically from here, we can actually just go ahead and apply our formula as needed. So what do we have here? Well, we have that basically the formula says that you're going to take 1 half and then take 1 minus well, it's one half, but raised to the fifth power. And that's, you know, again, where things can kind of get confusing. But we have one minus uh, a half, and this is going to equal to one half multiplied by one minus one over 32. And then this is divided by one half. What this says is that basically you end up with one half multiplied by 31 over 32 divided by, well, it's divided by a half also, which would mean that basically the solution is 31 over 32 in terms of what it converges to. So we have that the finite geometric series sum is 31 over 32. Well, that's actually kind of interesting as it relates to series of which may not be, uh, for example, like finite. So we can actually look at that. So what if, for example, that you had that the geometric series went from k equals 1 to infinity, but it was still r to the, uh, in this case, k minus 1. So we know that basically it's 1 plus r um, plus r squared. And if we go ahead and we use our formula, basically what's going to happen is that you're going to end up with 1 minus r. And this is going to be raised to the nth power. And it's going to be divided by 1 minus r. But one of our conditions for convergence is that r is less than 1. This way, we have that the r, OK, so we have that the r, that this is going to approach 0. If that happens, then you end up with 1 over 1 minus r for the infinite geometric series sum. Now, this can actually be proven using the same method as before, where if you were to say, for example, that you have that s is equal to 1 plus r plus r squared, dot, 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 that if you multiply by minus r, you get minus r minus r squared minus r cubed. And you have that when you do the same method, that basically you have that s will equal to 1 over 1 minus r. And you can kind of see why, in fact, we have this stipulation that the absolute value of r is less than 1, so that we can have that there would be convergence uh, thereof of the infinite series sum. So we can consider then an example. Now keep in mind that for this to be valid, the r must be 
less than uh, 1 or the absolute value, right? So suppose that you have the series sum from k equals 1 to infinity and in this case let's say that you have uh, 2 thirds and it's raised to the k. Now again notice that it is not in the proper format so that means that you have to rewrite it. You have to rewrite it in a way that you can get the k minus 1. The easiest fix to that is to take 2 thirds and then multiply it times the series sum from k equals 1 to infinity and now you have 2 thirds raised to the k minus 1. But we already know that the formula would be applied to basically this portion right here. So all that we need to do essentially is just plug it in. So we have 1 divided by 1 minus 2 thirds of which you have 2 over 3 multiplied by 1 over well this is going to be 1 third in actuality so when we simplify this we end up with 2 thirds times 3 over 1 which is actually just going to equal to 2 so that means that this geometric series converges to 2 in actuality. And that's kind of nice, actually. So the only thing that we required was that, you know, we started with the right index, that is. But in all fairness, it's all just bookkeeping. But consider this, though. In what way can I utilize a geometric series, whether it's finite or infinite, well, if you kind of relate it to, let's say, like present value or future value with compound interest, recall that a future value with compound interest is basically taking a principal amount times 1 plus i, and then you raise it to the power n. Now, if we kind of think of it like this, that you're making a sequence of payments, then in that case, that's basically a finite geometric series sum. So, think about it. If we have that over a specific term of, let's say, like five years, or let's say six years, just because I, uh, well, yeah, that should be uh, four, right? Okay, so yeah, we'll do five years, sorry. So at each end of the period, you're making these, let's say like uh, annual deposits. Each period, there's gonna be interest that's gonna be added. So that means that we have basically that over this term, there's going to be basically five different payments, but you have that the interest is only going to be added, you know, just one less, if that makes sense, because on the first deposit, you know, no interest is earned. So in that case, basically it's to the n minus 1. And that's what I mean by that this is, in fact, a geometric series. So if we think about it like this, then, as it relates to the finite geometric series sum, then that means that we have that it would start at 1 and we would have that the nth payment so the final payment would just be the upper index so that'll just be n but we have the payment that we said that is p we have 1 plus i now note that because this is a finite series sum that it doesn't matter in terms of like whether or not um, the r is less than 1. So we have that it's raised to the k minus 1. Okay, so we have k minus 1. But we already know the formula basically is um, it's going to be p multiplied by well in this case you have that it's going to be 1 
minus, so you have 1 plus i, and this is to the n, but then it's divided by 1 minus 1 plus i. But then notice that in this case, the negative, uh, the n you know, the negative is going to be distributed, so the ones will cancel out, and you'll end up with the following. And we're just going to kind of rewrite it as 1 minus, not 1, sorry, uh, parentheses 1 plus i raised to the n minus 1, and then all of this is divided by i. Now, typically, in any case, we could call this, for example, um, the lump sum, right? And in any case, if you want to be consistent, you know, we could put an R there. So in that case, we have a sequence of payments that's being made for a particular period, and it's being compounded, you know, whether it's annual, semi-annual, etc. So here, what we're saying is that the R is the payment, the I is the annual interest uh, per period, and the M is the period. The N is equal to M times T. And then basically the S is the kind of like the future value that you would like to have and not O. Now, in any case, though, you could probably relate this to, say, for example, a debt or, you know, some type of amount of money that you borrowed, similarly. Uh, but in this case, the it's kind of opposite, right? You have to have that it's going to go to zero, and we can find that in actuality. We can find that in actuality using the same process in either case because we have that it would be that you would have this amount of money of which that you have that it's multiplied by 1 plus i to the negative n <clears throat> times negative n and that would be the present value so in that case that means that basically we can get the sequence of payments of which that is to be rid of a debt in either case. I'm going to write the formula just so that you can kind of see how it relates, but it's going to basically just be the present value is equal to a payment multiplied by 1 minus 1 plus i to the negative n divided by i, and then we just close it. So in either case, like if you, you know, needed to see an example for this, you could probably say, you know, if I'm depositing, let's say, for example, I have a payment of $100, and I have that the interest rate is, let's say, like 4% compounded monthly, and then from there, you know, maybe uh, you did this for just like, uh, let's say like two years, okay? Then in this case, since it's basically a cash deposits, then in that case, you have that the lump sum would be 100 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.04 divided by 12 raised to the 24, because you have 24 payments, minus 1, all divided by 0 0.04 divided by 12. And then from there, you just figure out that calculation, of which we can do that really quickly. So we have 0 0.04 divided by 12 plus 1 raise that to the 24 minus 1. Now all of this is divided by the interest per period of which we said it was monthly so divided by 
12 and then we close it and then we hit equals and then we multiply by 100. So in any case we have that the sum of this one in particular is 2000 four hundred ninety four dollars and twenty nine cents so four hundred ninety four and twenty nine cents so this is the amount of which that it you know accumulated to if you will um, and of course you know you can find the amount of interest that was paid or earned in either case because you know that basically it's minus the one hundred dollar payments times the 24 payments that were made over the two years and we find that the um, the interest in this case was ninety four dollars and twenty nine cents um, but you know if we in fact did you know say that you borrowed you know money in any case like let's say like you borrowed two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and the annual uh, interest was at you know eight percent and this was compounded uh, let's say monthly but let's say that the time for this would be 15 years you could actually figure out how much the payment would be in order to pay this off within the 15 years in either case using the same formula from above imagine if you had to do that using it as you know the finite series sum where you have all of the terms being added with the interest accumulated added in and so on then that might take a little while because yeah you have that that's gonna be 15 times 12 payments in either case um, and that's you know like how much like you'd be calculating it and that can get pretty tough especially like if you're talking about a mortgage that's 30 years times 12 so 360 um, payments in either case so uh, yeah so in this case the formula is actually pretty useful and of course there's a functionality on most calculators that will calculate that uh, what is called an annuity actually so these are ordinary annuities and this is how I relate them to the geometric series uh, that's finite that is